1995 NAFAD Leadership Club Youth Summit. My name is Mr. Smith. I'm the Student Assistant Coordinator for North South School District. Also responsible for NAFAD Club in the high school. Here we have NAFAD students from the high school and uh, Roosevelt. Uh, I'm going to talk about a list of activities that we have during the school year. Uh, we often have the Youth Summit, which we're attending here now. We also have a talent show, Prom Promise, and a number of activities that take place that the students here are involved in. Uh, we hope that you, after today, will take back a message to your middle school and implement the <coughs> fact clubs throughout the school district. That is one of the reasons why we're having this summit today. Uh, I'm now going to introduce to you Mr. Ernie Hadrick. He's a community liaison. You might see him uh, floating around the community and also in all your schools. Mr. Ernie Hatch. Good morning. 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 Well, we've been involved with NAFAD for about six years in various capacities. And uh, as Mr. Smith said earlier, we're just trying this year to increase the student involvement in the program and expand it throughout the school district. i got a lot of people that I'd like to, to um, introduce to you. And I'm going to try to do it real fast. First, I would just like to introduce the members of our committee who really made, made uh, this program happen today. Mr. Magdalini, who's uh, the director of the Patricia Society, which is a food cupboard in Norristown. Ms. Suzanne Galloway, who's at Mervis, Galloway Mervis, I'm sorry, who's the um, assistant director of the Lincoln Center over in Bridgeport, uh, Mr. Chris Davis, security counselor at Roosevelt School, um, Mr. E.J. Smith, who, uh, also, who also made the introductions earlier. Um, we have a lot of staff from the schools, and I would like to introduce everybody, but I think the kids from different schools get to know the people from the other buildings. Take time to do that as you see the adults passing through today. Take time to greet these folks and sort of self-introduce your, uh, yourself to them. Um, my, my office made at Eisenhower, my office at Eisenhower, and my co-worker, Mr. Levi Blaylock back here, school social worker, somebody that all of you need to know. We have Ms. Lisa Blasco from Lincoln, Audrey Murray, who most of you know from the middle schools in Norristown. Uh, Ms. Pat Brown, from uh, Stewart's in the back, Story Ellis, from Eisenhower, Ms. Carol Peppy, from Eisenhower, okay, from East Norton is uh, Ms. Bonnie Fulton, and also Ms. Nancy Hannah, and, Ms. <coughs> and also uh, another young lady from Lincoln back here, Lisa, what's your last name, Lisa? Okay. <laughs> uh, there are other presenters that you'll meet the presenters as you go through the workshops. But the most important person, uh, also Dana Davis back there for the Boy Scouts. Mr. Davis. Um, the, important, the most important person, person who, who uh, made it financially possible for us to have this program today is Ms. Uh, Sonia Edwards from Mercy Health. And uh, the Mercy Health Plan gave us a grant, a thousand dollar grant, because they cared about about two people, and they want us to provide this program to you today. So for the second year in a row, they have provided us with funds to put on this program. And um, without further ado, I'd like to present to you uh, Ms. Sonia. I'm not going to take up much, much of your time. I just wanted to say that Mercy Health Plan is proud to sponsor events such as these, which give some direction to our young people. School is a lot different. Even the world is a lot different today than it was when I was in school. I'm, I'm not that old. You might think I am. But I'm not that old. But school, the world, a lot of things have changed nowadays. And I'm encouraged to see young people leading younger people, because that's what we need in today's society. So please take away with you the information that they're giving you is valuable. You can learn something from it, even if it's just one thing, but listen and try to learn. And by all means, you are very welcome to the funds to put this show on. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Uh, two other people on the side, uh, well, 
with your presenters, and you'll meet them during the course of the day. With John, Mr. John Bates from the Children's Aid Society, uh, and Kali Cohen from the Coffee Community Center. There's two other young ladies in the back whose names I don't have up here. They're presenters <laughs> in, in your workshops today. And they're from families uh, from the Central right. Mental House. Right. We'll be meeting them later on for the day. So, uh, Kathy Darkoff and Susan. Susan Rudick. Okay. Thank you for thank you all for being here. And we'll let the uh, NAPAD uh, people from high school take the show off from here. Uh, <laughs> and just so everybody knows, the, the, the first session we're going to divide the boys and the girls, and after this after that first session, we're going to be grouped together again. Okay, so good. assistant, Dana Davis, is going to help with this process this morning. What I'd like to do is tell you, first of all, what I do. My job is Director of Urban Scouting uh, and the scouting program, which some of you are familiar with. We develop the thing that I just said earlier. What do we develop? Leadership. Uh, I didn't hear it back there. I heard everybody speak. But back here, one more time. What do we develop? Leadership. That's right, leadership. And in leadership, there's a lot of qualities in leadership. First of all, to be a leader, you have to learn to do one thing. You have to learn to be able to follow. You have to follow before you can lead. Everybody say this with me. You have to follow. You have to follow before you can lead. You have to follow before you can lead. You have to follow before you can lead. Okay. Very good. As director of urban scouting for the Valley Forge Council Boy Scouts, uh, independent, independent council of the National Boy Scout Organization, how many of the young men in here have ever been in the scouting program? Okay, two. That says a lot about what my job is all about. The fact that two young men in the room raised their hand says that there's a need for scouting to come and work in Norristown. Because over the years, it has not. And my job is to develop the programs in Norristown and make them better. For a number of reasons, they haven't worked. Economics, social, identification, as well as promotion. Nobody has placed a concentrated interest on Norristown. The leadership comes from out of the community, and the leadership is all volunteer work. In other words, I work with all volunteers, except a few paid people. I work with volunteers. My job affords me the opportunity to come out and work with all of you and your parents if they decide they want to sign you up for scouting. Also, my job is to go out and do the fundraising aspect for the scouting program in the Norristown and Chester area. My job also uh, gives me an administrative level role where I, I have uh, subordinates under me, which I tell them to go places to play. Oh, I asked them. I apologize. <laughs> <He tells us. laughs> to go place to place. My job also is to go out when, when, when the young men go camping fishing, hiking, to the Eagles games, to the Sixers games, to wherever they're going. My job is to, number one, promote the program, and number two, to participate once it comes about. My job also consists of, there's four levels of scouting. Number one, there's a Cub Scout program, which uh, maybe your younger brothers might be in, which is ages six to 10, and we call it a more family-oriented program. And in that program, the, the um, emphasis is that the family come work together. The next program, which I think just about everybody in this room falls in the category of, is the scouting program, the Boy Scout program, which is a leadership development program. Therefore, you don't, we look at this program as you gaining some independence to develop yourself as leaders. 
and that's 11 through 18. The next program would be the exploring program. The exploring program is a co-ed program, male and female, age 14 through 21, excuse me, through 20, and it's designed so that you all can look at career development as well as hobbies or special interests. That's the Explorer post. The last division that uh, the scouting program offers is the Learning for Life division. And the Learning for Life division is where Dana works. The Learning for Life division goes into the classrooms of the Norristown Public School System and offers the programs in the classroom setting that teach ethical choices, decision making, uh, whatever skills will we say, Dana? Uh, the truth and consequences, uh, the voluntary uh, issues, uh, the things that you need to do to be a part of your own community. Uh, those are the things that we'd like to instill in youth at an early age. I think what the young lady said downstairs is that life has changed so much. Things happen <coughs> so fast. And so many things come at you young men today that you have very few outlets that are offered any place else other than here in the Boy Scouts. And I don't want you to think this is just some guy sitting around the fire cooking marshmallows and striking his flint to make a fire in the ground. There's a lot more to the Boy Scouts than that. That's that exactly right. Probably explain it to you. That's exactly right. Thank you, Dana. And you guys, if you, if you see me in a scouting uniform, I look different. But this is what I wear on a normal day. This is my job. They pay me for this full time. They pay me to come out and recruit you all to be scouts. I say recruit you all to know more so to be leaders, to teach you how to become leaders. And what I'm going to do before I leave here today is I'm going to pass a flyer out to each of you all. And if it's in your neighborhood uh, and you'd like to be a part of the scouting program, I'd like to extend that hand to you this morning. Why don't you guys do me a favor? Okay, I'll start you guys off. I wanted to play football and they wouldn't let me because I was a girl. Yay! I got that. What? Really? Let me tell you a little bit about myself on that note. I played basketball since I was about seven years old. And when I moved to New Jersey from Florida Middle School, I wanted to play basketball. And there wasn't a women's basketball team, there was a men's basketball team. What part of Florida you from? Let me talk to you afterwards about my background. What I wanted to do is I wanted to play basketball, and there was only a women's basketball, a men's basketball team. And in sixth grade, they wouldn't allow me to play. They said I wasn't good enough. So all that summer, I worked hard, and I worked out, and I played with the fellas on the basketball court, because all my cousins were boys. And the following year, I tried out for the team. The coach told me, well, now you're a girl, and this is a boys' basketball team, and we can't accommodate you. I tried out anyway. And I talked to one of the women teachers, and I said, this is what I want to do. And I know I'm better than half the guys on the team. And I tried out, and I made it. And next year, first year I played, they didn't let me play a lot, because I was still a woman. So the following year, I worked even harder. And by my last year in middle school, I started on that men's basketball team. So never let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Called determination. You have to have the determination desire to do that. And if you work out, and there's been women, whether you believe it or not, that have played on men's football teams. So if that's something that you want to do, go for it. But you have to realize that there will be times in your life when you set out to do things that people tell you you cannot do. People are going to scrutinize you. Basically, what they're going to do, they're going to say, oh, she's this, she's that, and she's trying to do this, and she's trying to do that. But you can't let that get you down. You have to do the things that you want to do in life. And that's the only way that you will be successful. Can I jump in here for a minute? Um, I think, like, you know, I want to be a doctor, and I have a million people telling me I can't do it because I'm a girl. I think you can use that, what they're giving you, 
and make that your reason for like wanting to do it. You have a million people telling you you can't go out there and prove them wrong. Make that, you know, your reason to keep pushing for whatever it is that you want to do. Do all of you know what an obstacle is? An obstacle is something that stands in your way. And the best thing I've learned from my experience is that you take things that stand in your way and you use them as a step ladder to reach your goal. You step on top of them as if to push it down to rise above the occasion. And that's what we as young ladies have to begin to do. So you can't let the fact that people say because you don't wear the Tommy Hill fingers and the polos. And you don't have the long hair or the short hair. Or you don't wear the heels or the Timberland boots. You're not cool. Okay. Because that's not what's going to make you or break you. What's going to make you or break you is the desire to succeed. The desire to do whatever you wish to do to accomplish your goal. And your goal is just that, it's your goal. It's not your mother's or your father's goal. Because my mother's and father's goal is for me to be in law school right now. And that's not where I am because that was their goal. My goal was to go out and to be my own person. My mother's goal was not for me to play basketball. My mother's goal was for me to be sitting in class and doing a lot of other different things. Doing things that women were supposed to do. Basketball wasn't one of them. Let me tell you something, basketball paid my way through college. And now, she looks and she says, well, honey, I'm glad you learned how to play basketball because you saved me a lot of money. <laughs> so now my goal became her goal. And that's what you have to do. You have to, let, you have to live your life. You have to have your own desires, your own goals. And you have to go out and you have to achieve those things. You have to do just that. You have to make them personal. Have that ownership. And then when you reach your goal and you accomplish the things in life that you set out to achieve, you have to go back. So you never forget where you came from. And that's why I'm here today. You go back and you help the next person. So if it's a classmate and you're good in English, but you're bad at math and your friend is good at math, you go to them and you say, look, I'm struggling. Don't be ashamed. I'm struggling. I need some help. Can you help me out? And I understand you don't know how to read too well. You're having problems spelling. So let me help you out, because that's my strong point. And then when you go on to be successful, you go back into your communities. And you see the people that are struggling, the people that will be in your seat five years from now, four years from now, six years from now. And you say, hey, I remember sitting in those seats. And I remember how it was. And I remember when people told me I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. This is what I'm doing today. No, no. What do it means to you? Getting along with anybody who you live with, like brothers and sisters. Getting along with anybody who you live with, brothers and sisters. What? Yes. Like giving respect. Giving respect. Anybody else? All those things is true. Respect. Respect is a big part of it. What else is a big part of getting along at home? What is it? Excuse me? Paris. Paris. Oh, that is good. Paris. Paris is important. Trust. Trust. What else? Anybody else have any thoughts about what it means to get along at home? What needs to happen? Yes. Following rules. Following, that's a good one too. Following opinion. Rules. What else? Anybody else? Who has conflict or tension at home with their parents? Who's, who sometimes in here have a difficult time getting along with their parents okay. and think their parents do not understand? Please raise your hand. I'm surprised I don't see all the hands. Okay, put your hands down. So you get along well with your parents. Everything's very harmonized. Yeah. You never raise your hand. So everything's fine. Okay, good. So we're probably going to be speaking to most of everybody besides that one gentleman who has an excellent relationship at home. And what I like for you all to do is kind of to begin and think about putting yourself in the position of being a parent 
and what that means. Put yourself in your parents or your caretakers or your foster family's shoes and think about what it means to them to be a parent to you. Now you know who you are, you know how you feel, and you know how you think. I want you today to begin to think about being a parent and now and see how your thoughts are somewhat different than what they normally are. When they do come up, they have a job to do. It's not a personal matter. Get out of the area. Drugs in Norristown, very bad problem, and it's increased over the years with cocaine and crack. And with that particular drug, we find more and more violence in our community. Uh, get up in the morning and turn the news on or read the paper, and you'll see how it affects children, people like yourselves. Uh, in most cases, innocent people, people in a group, people in a crowd just hanging out. Uh, drug dealers uh, use the term of innocent bystanders is getting shot or killed as mushrooms. And the reason they call you mushrooms is because they're underfoot, they're under, they're, you're under their feet. And you mean as much to them as about a mushroom does. Uh, there's uh, many areas in Norristown uh, that we have on street drug uh, trades and dealings. With drug trade and, and, and drug dealing, there comes a problem of uh, weapons and guns and violence and, uh, in general. Uh, be smart. These areas are not for you to hang out. Uh, just because you have friends that want to hang out, they want to stop and see somebody. Be your own person you know, and think about you. It's usually the innocent that get involved in and in the crossfire or, or get involved uh, in assaults in these areas. It's not so uncommon for you to go into a drug area thinking it's cool, you're no problem, you just got to do what you got to do, you're not bothering anybody. That's not always the situation. Uh, with drug dealing and drug use uh, comes a sort of all different type of crimes. In these areas we find victims of assault, victims of robbery, and whatever else you, you could imagine. It's not a good area for you to hang. Uh, these type of people have the one thing on their mind that's business and themselves, and they really don't care about you. Uh, jewelry and the sort. I don't know if you ever get to Philadelphia with a train or the L, or even in certain parts of Norristown. Let me turn this right on. We're very conscious conscious of our surroundings, especially coming, uh, traveling back and forth. One of those things is we try to dress the part. I try not to be too dressy. I try not to show off any type of jewelry or rings. My wife uh, owns a fur, which she hardly wears me because of that reason, especially in New York City. And if you go into Penn Station, which is a large, a very large transportation and train station, you'll have police officers pick out individuals that are not uh, conscious and aware of their surroundings and pull people over and go, lady, get that jewelry off your neck, put it in your pocket. Stop flaunting what you have. And it makes sense. There's thousands and thousands of people that come and go in that train station. And there's many, many people are there looking for the people that are out of place. They can pick you out just if you were even had a sign on you. I'm a victim, take care of me. Uh, in a lot of areas, and that includes Norristown, we'll find the incidence of crime uh, uh, rising as you get later into the evening. Your, your chance of becoming a victim of a carjacking, an assault, a robbery, increases with the time and location that you happen to be in. And the problem is, we always, we have the mentality, we read the paper, this happened to them, or you watch the TV, that happened to them, that's unfortunate. You're the next victim, you're, gonna, you're the people that you're reading about. Uh, don't think that it won't happen to you, for whatever reason. Know the area that you're in. We have some really bad areas in Norristown due to drugs. Uh, I'm sure you know those locations and, and those areas. Uh, be aware of your surroundings and your locations. Think about you. Uh, it's easy when you're traveling with friends 
to go along for the ride and hang out with your buddy. He wants to do this, you want to do that, and you follow. If you don't think it's right, you know, do what's necessary for you. If he's got to do what he's got to do, let him do it. But keep these things in mind.